So I'm going to show you how to paint what's called Goethe's color wheel. So we just did these technical color wheels and in the technical color wheel, all the colors have the same amount of space. In, in Goethe's color wheel, the colors go in the same order because that's the lawful order that you discovered by painting the technical color wheel that when things, when yellow overlaps with blue, you get green. And when yellow overlaps with red, you get orange. And when red overlaps with blue, you get violet. So that's why they're in that order, because that's what they do. And what Goethe said about color is he said that color, colors are the deeds of the light, what it suffers and what it endures. So for Goethe, color comes from the interaction of light and darkness. And so we'll start Goethe's color wheel with the interaction of yellow and blue. And I'm going to paint it for you in two ways. First, I'm going to paint it wet on wet paper so that you can see the whole thing of where you're going with this exercise. And then I'll show you how to start it on stretched paper, on a big piece of paper. And we'll be working a lot with how does one color move and how is that different than another color. So first of all, we'll take the paper out of the water and put it down on your board. And then we're going to start with yellow. And you're going to put your yellow in this lower left of your paper. And then you're going to put blue in this lower right side. And so right now you have two very different colors. <laughs> And then the question is, what happens when they mix? So you can bring your yellow and let it invade your blue. And this other, really other thing called green comes into being. So notice that moment when it becomes green. And it's helpful with this color wheel if you let the green call to its complement, which is rose. And it's as if this interaction, these two colors come together, and then something happens and it starts to move up, and it's all headed towards rose. So with the tiniest little bit of rose, you can remind it of its destination. And now we'll follow the movement of these colors. First, we'll go up the yellow side. So from yellow into orange. And you can always go back into the color before to blend it in. So yellow can meet orange and blend. And then reddish.
And then we just pause on that side. It's like this activity has pushed the colors up that far. And at the same time, but unless you paint with two hands, you would have to do one after the other. So at the same time, this energy from the mixing and the making of green is gonna come up this side. So we'll see that happen first with this ultramarine blue. And then with violet. Close a little bit. And so now the color wheel has moved up this far and it's headed towards that very faint little bit of rose. And so now it's time to complete it and bring those colors together. And notice again the feeling that you have. You noticed it when it turned green. Now notice it again, what happens when it becomes complete. Okay, so that on wet paper will take you 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You could go over it again, you could make the colors darker, but it's a fairly short exercise and experience. But knowing that this is the movement and the order of it will help you when we do a much longer process on stretched paper. And now I'm gonna turn everything around and We'll do that, but you can stay where you are. Okay, we're rolling. So now we're going to paint Gertrude's color wheel on this big piece of stretched paper, and we're going to do it with layered watercolor, and it's going to take a long time. So by the magic of making this all into a movie, you'll get to see it happen faster, but you can expect to work on it for many hours, layering it. Now the first thing is that the colors that we just used with the wet on wet, we have to make them less strong for this. So we take a dish with a little bit of water in it and put some yellow into the dish and then a little bit of blue into that dish. And I think we may as well just go around and make all our dishes. So just like we did with the wet on wet, we'll start with yellow in this corner of your paper, really pale. And it's good to start really light because if you get something in the wrong place, it's pretty easy to fix it as you keep going. But if it's really strong, it's harder to fix. 
and the blue approaches right in next to the yellow. And then the yellow comes into the blue and you get just a hint of green as they mix there. And that hint of green calls forth the hint of rose. And you can imagine that the rose is way, way, way far away. And it's traveling closer and closer and closer. It's coming in behind your painting and it's coming through your painting and it's just echoing a little bit up here in the top. You can't really even hardly see it. But it's going to give you that direction, just like we did in the wet on wet. And so then, you're going to bring orange above. And don't worry about mixing them all on the paper. They'll mix by layering as you make more, um, more layers. Just soften out your edges a little bit. You're not making shapes, you're just making spaces of color. And then coming up to the red. So we have our blue, now we bring ultramarine. Okay, so now you have all of the colors in the right places. But now, as you keep painting, for, so now you'd have to draw your whole uh, board, your whole paper, because if you paint on it wet, you lift the color back up again. So dry it all, and then go through the whole process again. But never end your one color in the same place you ended it last time. Always overlap them, and then you'll have a nice transition in between them.
So after you've spent all this time to build up your color wheel, you can do a last few layers accentuating the original movement from the time that we talked, you know, when we talked about it in the beginning. Um, so the, the yellow meeting the blue, green, and then the movement coming up this way to the rose. And so you can paint that quite freely, leaving a little bit of edges, but just be careful that it doesn't just drip everywhere. So your yellow comes in, your blue meets it, And now the dynamic of the movement goes upwards. But of course you can only do one side at a time, but you have to imagine that it's both things are happening at the same time. And that movement is a little different. This movement on the violet side is a little more floaty. This side is a little more direct, just because of how those colors interact. That's their nature. of that rose can even come down a little bit and then just go around and catch, catch your drips. You could do that a couple times and then you've done it. <laughs> 